All right, hey everyone. Uh, we're going to do a quick tutorial about setting up for the Sentry simulation. Uh, again, this should be the second uh, Robot Virtual Worlds challenge, and also just a quick review of how to get into VMware uh, and then into Robot Virtual Worlds. Okay, so first off, I'm going to go to our CAD engineering uh, page on Schoology, find this VMware button, go ahead and click on that. And then I personally just go ahead and use the HTML access. Uh, if you are on a PC or even on a Mac, uh, you can install the client. That way you'll be on your desktop. But uh, I think this is probably the easiest way to do it. All right. At this point, you're putting in your Northville username and password. OK. I'm going to click on CTE VDI pool. <coughs> All right, and again, the virtual machine is essentially logging into a Northville computer. It uh, has all the software installed on there. Uh, and then these computers are essentially uh, kind of streaming it to the cloud. So you're kind of working remotely, um, but you're working on a school computer instead. So uh, there's definitely some benefits here. Uh, the downsides is it takes a little bit longer uh, to load. Sometimes it has a little lag to it. But um, that way, we can kind of share the software. You don't have to go. Uh, find it and install it, all the licensing stuff, so on and so forth. Okay, uh, now kind of why this is loading up, just as a reminder here, <coughs> uh, the Sentry Simulation, the challenge is essentially you're going to try to uh, have your robot move around a, a box. Right? So it's kind of like a rectangular shape, we're going to keep going over and over again. Uh, and while this is loading up, maybe just kind of save you some time here, I'm going to pause the recording and I'll jump right back in when this is finished loading. All right, so I think we're back. Uh, everything has loaded up here. And what I'm going to be looking for, again, is this one that says Robot C, Robot Virtual Worlds. Make sure you click on this one that looks like a circle, not the other one that says graphical. OK. Uh, oh, let me get rid of that. <coughs> OK, double click on that, and it should load up. Um, not sure why this error keeps popping up, but you can go ahead and hit, go ahead and hit yes. As a reminder, the first thing you always want to double check here is make sure you're on VEX 2.0 Cortex. Uh, if you were using your own computer, this would save, but sometimes when you're doing this on virtual machine, I think it restarts it almost every time. So uh, make sure you change this to VEX 2.0 Cortex. And then I'm just going to again double check that it's selected. Compiler target is selected as virtual worlds. All right, so let's jump right into it. The first thing I'm actually going to recommend is I'm going to use my Sumo Bot. <coughs> Uh, code as a starting point and kind of build off from that. Okay, so for me here, I'm going to see if I can. Oops, I don't know why this is loading so slowly here. Um, but I've been saving, I've been recommending everyone save uh, all their files to their home drive. Uh, that way they can have access to it um, and it'll actually save uh, as opposed to saving it to your desktop. Okay, so uh, don't just save it to the documents page that it defaults to. Uh, make sure you go to your home drive. And again, I'm kind of freezing up here, so let me give it a pause and see if it'll load up. Oh, there it comes. I think it's, it's actually working now. So I'm going to find, scroll all the way down, find your home drive, click on this. Uh, I had made a, f a folder earlier that says CAD Vex Robotics. Uh, hopefully, you have a folder that looks similar. And here's my Sumo Bot example. Okay, so at this point, my recommendation again would be to hit File, go to Save As, and I'm going to name this one Century Simulation. Man, why we're really slow today? What's going on? All right, but I'm going to name it Century Simulation Example, and hit the Save button. Okay, so at this point, you notice on the top it says Sentry Simulation. I'm still going to use Squarebot, but now I'm going to change some of my comments. Right, so remember, the comments are all here in green. Uh, again, include your date and the block that you are writing this code in. And then a brief description of the challenge. Uh, program the robot to <coughs> move around a rectangular box, something like that. Okay, uh, I think there's an official description. We can look it up in a second. Okay, at this point, <coughs> um, to kind of check out the code, uh, right now all I'm doing is have my arm moving upwards, I think it is, for a few sec couple seconds, not even half, a uh, second and a half, and then it's moving forward for 600. 
okay? So for now, I'm just going to kind of download it to Robot just so I can see how what it's doing on the simulation and making sure I, I get the challenge uh, correct. And so I'm going to log in. Now I'm logging in here with my CS2N account. If you don't remember that, you can uh, look it up in your email. It should be able to get you connected there. All right. Again, double check under robots. You're using the same robot that you have selected here, SquareBot. Uh, so I've got SquareBot selected. Next up, I'm going to Movement, and we're going to hit Sentry Simulation. All right. So it sees here. Here's the official uh, description. We're going to program the robot to patrol the perimeter of an object. Okay. Touching the object will result in a failure. Completion is required. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm going to hit Start Activity. Now before I actually hit Play here, the other really important thing uh, that we didn't use as much last time, just because it wasn't necessary, I'm going to come back over to Robot C, and if you hit under Robot, there's this option now for Debugger Windows. Right? Once you've downloaded a program, you hit, the Debugger Windows should be uh, available, and I'm going to make sure I have Motors selected. Okay. And it says motors with PID. Uh, typically, it'll recognize what motors you have connected. And I'll show you why we want to do this here in a second. I'm going to pull up my um, virtual worlds again. And let's see if I hit play here, what happens. Okay, so once I hit play, I'm going to hit pause for a second. Notice that my motor and sensor setup, or sorry, my motor uh, debugger window <coughs> is showing the right motor, left motor. Okay, right now, both of those are set to 127. Okay, I can also see that my arm motor is actually still at 63. All right, so what that's telling me is that I might need to actually tell my arm motor to stop. So I'll set my arm motor to zero. And the other thing I'm looking for is this encoder count. Okay, so I'm going to keep an eye on my encoder count. Uh, and actually, I'm going to add one more window here to take a look and see what my, uh, actually my, <coughs> um, my other encoders are reading. Okay, so I'm going to open up debugger windows and go over here to sensors. Okay, now under sensors, um, we'll talk about why we have two different types of encoders, uh, but the ones that we actually want to use right now are these uh, um, uh, quad encoders, right? This right encoder, left encoder. So I'm going to look actually for this. It says 1020 and 1021 right now. Okay, so let's go back to playlists, and I'm going to keep running this until I get to this corner. Okay, so I'll hit play. One more time. Oh, locked up on me here. Okay, and I'm going to stop it right there. Okay, so now I'm going to take a look here, and it says that my encoder counts are up to 1212 12 on my right encoder, 1213 12 on the left encoder. Okay, so these are the values I'm going to want to use to put into my code. Okay, so now if I come back over here, the couple things I want to change is. Uh, I want, actually, I want my arm to lift up first, so I'm going to make that negative. Okay, so I noticed that my arm actually went down when I was watching the video. And then secondly, I want to make sure that my arm motor actually stops moving. So I'm going to include a line here that says motor arm motor equals zero. Uh, and that's going to be say, saying that the motor is going to be no more power going to the motor. Um, and then meanwhile, over here, Instead of setting it so that it's um, running it for six seconds, I want to actually run this until um, the encoder count reaches this number. So I'm just going to say for the interest of uh, keeping it simple, I'm going to say 1,200. Okay. Um, so instead, I'm going to take a look at my code here. I'm going to remove this move forward. And I'm, I'm going to introduce this while loop. Okay, so the while condition... Okay, typically the way I like to set this up is I set up my curly brackets. This is no longer based on time, but I want it to be based on encoder counts. Okay, so I'm going to have this motor turning on 127. How long do I want to do this for? Well, this is going to be based on that sensor value. Okay, the sensor value I want to read, I'm going to just choose one of these, a right encoder, left encoder. Since I'm moving forward regardless, it doesn't really matter which one I choose. Uh, in this case, I'm going to just use my left encoder. Okay, And I'm going to say while the sensor value, while it's less than, less than this number that I'm seeing here. So 12, 
Uh, I'll, I'll just be more specific here for this one. 1213 is where I stopped it, so I'll just go ahead and use that number again. Okay, so in this case right now, it should what should happen is uh, the arm should lift up first, and it will stop for it will lift up for 1500 sec milliseconds. Stop, and then as long as the sensor value reads less than this number, I, I'm going to move forward. The one part that I forgot to add here is I need to make sure I clear my encoders. Okay, so what I'm just going to do there is I'm going to make sure my left encoder reads zero. And whenever I do my um, clearing of sensors, I like to just do all of them kind of at once. So I'm going to do, oops, set both of those equal to zero. So making sure I count from zero before I get to 1213. Okay, so those are a couple changes I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run for now. I'm going to download it to robot, and let's see kind of what it does here. So I'm going to re restart this. <coughs> Okay, so first off, I'm going to keep an eye on my motors. So let's see if my, my arm actually stops. Okay, so I'm going to hit play. The arm is going up for half a second. Now, actually, I'm going to... Oops. Sorry about that. Actually, I should keep an eye on my, my sensors here. Oh, and actually, it looks like my encoder is only counted up to about 237 here for some reason. Okay, so let me double check that. Maybe I might need to refresh this one more time. Hit play. Okay, let's keep an eye on it. So 12, so actually 12 something only actually took me to this spot. So uh, what might have happened was I actually read this, that I maybe didn't have that encoder count uh, reset at the beginning. So um, let's go ahead and just play around with this number a little bit. And it looked like I was not quite uh, a little over halfway there. So let me change that number to 2000. Uh, actually just for the interest of <clears throat> Um, making sure we can get a value here. I'm going to go up to 3,000. Hit download to robot. Switch back over to my oops. Switch back over to my CS2N. Let's hit play. It's going up. Now my encoder counts are here. Okay, so it actually oh here it goes. So it looks like it's actually more like 2,100 is the uh, is the number I'm looking at here. So I, again, I'm looking at my uh, sensor debugger window. For the left encoder, I'm at 2122. All right, so let's change this number now. So instead of 3,000, 3,000 was just to kind of check, make sure I can go uh, far enough. I'm going to set that to 2122. All right, let's try a download to robot again. Open this up, refresh it, hit play. Okay, arms going up, stopping. This is running all the way until, oops. Sorry guys, I'm just gonna try to keep an eye on this down here. Okay, so my encoders it stopped right at that point uh, when it read when it read when it read 2122. Okay, so what I would do at this point is the next thing I would set up is my code to turn right. Right, so remember change the motor so that one's moving backwards or moving forward. Again, play around with the encoder counts so that it actually stops when you want it to, and keep doing that until it loops all the way around the, the box. Okay, And uh, next up, we'll start playing around with some options to create some functions, so maybe you can actually set it up so that um, you, you, know, you might notice you're going to repeat the code over and over again. Um, so hopefully, once you kind of get up this first straight away and turn, uh, you can kind of copy and paste it a couple times so it goes all the way around the box. All right, uh, good luck.